Before I start the story, let me describe the setting a bit. So I was staying at a nice cottage in Ontario. This cottage was part of a small community with 12 cottages in total. They were all arranged in a semicircle around a nice park. The park had tall trees, a small playground, and a picnic area. The cottages were close to a beautiful lake where people could swim, fish, and canoe. During our stay, my older brother and I became friends with a kid named Brandon, who was about 14 years old. Brandon had a habit of wandering off on his own and preferred hanging out with us rather than being with his family. As a young kid, I couldn't understand why someone wouldn't want to be close to their parents. Maybe it was because I was a bit of a goody-goody when I was younger. I always did what my parents told me, always following the rules and try stay out of trouble. And honestly, I do not like Brandon much, as he was a bit of a troublemaker. But he was a good friend of my brother, and since I looked up to my brother so much, I would follow him everywhere, even if it meant hanging out with Brandon. I wanted to do everything my brother did, because I thought he was the coolest person in the world. Eventually, Brandon got the idea to sneak out, and of course, my brother tagged along. Since we shared a room, I had no choice but to join them. At first, we simply wandered over to the park and hung out there for a while, enjoying the quiet night and the cool breeze rustling through the trees. But soon we all felt bored and wanted to do something more exciting. So I suggested we call it a night and head to bed, but the older kids were the ones making decisions. Brandon proposed exploring the woods, and even though I tried to argue against it, they just ignored me. So reluctantly, we set off into the woods, with only the faint glow of Brandon's phone to guide us. Thankfully, the woods weren't too dense. You could even hear the distant hum of the highway just a few miles away. After a short walk, I wanted to go back, but I only had two choices, walk back alone in the dark or stay with them. After a while, I realized that the woods had gone quiet. No crickets, no owls, not even a breeze. I pointed this out, and we all stopped and listened. After a couple of seconds of complete silence, my brother spoke up, sounding annoyed. Can you be quiet? I'm trying to listen. I was confused and told him I didn't make any noise. Then he mentioned the heavy breathing, comparing it to a dying pig, and told me to keep it down. Just as I was going to argue, I heard the breathing too. It was heavy and sounded difficult. I whispered, that's not me, I can hear it too. My brother looked at me, then the breathing got louder, as if it was getting excited. Above us, there were two lights. They glowed brightly in a brilliant blue hue, swinging gently from side to side. We were all fixated on them, unable to tear our eyes away, almost as if we were under a spell. Suddenly, a chilling moan pierced the air, sending shivers down our spines. It sounded like someone who had smoked for years, struggling to let out a scream while desperately gasping for air. And we started running. We could hear branches breaking and trees shaking behind us. Whatever it was, it seemed to be in the trees. I cannot run too fast, mostly because of my small feet, so I knew I couldn't keep it up for long. Soon pain shot through my legs, and I had to stop while my brother and Brandon kept running ahead, leaving me behind. Still that thing, whatever it was, was getting closer fast so I dove into a bush nearby. But luck wasn't on my side because it turned out to be a thorn bush. Within seconds, I was covered in cuts and scratches. I had to bite my lip to stop myself from crying out in pain. As I sat there, trying to stay quiet, I heard something heavy land on the forest floor nearby. From my hiding spot in the bush, I saw the two lights from before, shining into the small clearing where I was. 
But these weren't lights. They were eyes. Those eyes revealed a creature that seemed like it came from a scary dream. It was about seven feet tall, skinny, and its skin was a dark gray color. Its arms were really long, with claws at the end. It stood there for a long time, searching around trying to find me. I stayed hidden in that bush for hours, not daring to move until I saw the sun rising fully above the horizon. Then I mustered all my strength and ran in the direction I thought the cabin was. I didn't care that I was bleeding a lot, or that my clothes were torn to shreds from the thorn bush. I paid no attention to the burning sensation in my legs as I ran, pushing through the forest for what felt like an eternity. Bursting out of the trees, I stumbled onto a bustling highway. The next thing I knew, I woke up in a hospital bed, surrounded by beeping machines and concerned faces. Apparently, someone had spotted me out of the woods with torn pajamas and called for help. When I tried to tell them what happened, no one believed me. I kept insisting, but everyone thought I was just imagining things from being in the woods too long. While I was away, my brother made it home and waited until morning to explain what happened. Then a search party had been organized before they received the call to come get me. It's been over seven long years since those terrifying events happened, and I've spent countless hours scouring the internet, desperately searching for any information that might help me identify that mysterious creature. This happened about two years ago, before pandemic. During a time when my mental health and relationship with my parents were not good. So I often felt alone and misunderstood, which made everything even harder to handle. And to make things worse, a good friend of mine, who I had also gone on a couple of dates with, has left the city. We had been close, and losing him like that was a shock. I remember feeling numb and empty, unable to process the loss. Eventually I started having terrible dreams. Although I can't remember everything that happened in all of them, there was one thing that was always the same. The room, or whatever place I was in, would get darker and darker. All my dreams are from my point of view, so it felt like a weird dark haze was creeping into my vision but it was even worse than that. The entire room would go dark, like that scene in Lord of the Rings where Gandalf gets mad at Bilbo and everything suddenly darkens. That's the best way I can describe it. But in my dream, it felt even darker and heavier. Then I would start to feel a cold, heavy feeling in my stomach, along with complete terror, even though I couldn't see anything else and nothing had happened yet. Then, if there were people in my dream before, they would suddenly vanish when the darkness came. Or, in an instant, they'd all start staring at me with blank, lifeless faces. Now, having a bad dream once is scary, but this happened every single time, without fail. If the people didn't disappear, they'd be staring at me. And then, this feeling would come. If you've ever had your arm or leg fall asleep and felt that strange pins and needles sensation, it's sort of like that, but worse, and it gets heavier as it goes on. It feels like something is grabbing me tightly, squeezing me so hard it's crushing me. Sometimes, it even feels like it's focusing on my throat and choking me. I feel really scared like I'm surrounded by darkness. And often, there's this loud buzzing noise in my head, like when you hear static on the TV mixed with the sound of cicadas. It makes it hard to think, impossible to talk, and totally impossible to fight against it. This continues until I manage to break free and make myself wake up. But the fear doesn't always stop there. Sometimes I'd stay awake for an hour or two, 
unable to go back to sleep. Because if I tried, the dream would just start again from where it stopped. And whatever was causing it would just keep doing it. So, it was 2021, and I ended up breaking off contact with my parents, going through lots of tough living situations, and big life changes that I won't go into. I ended up living with my best friend, who has a small cabin in the countryside. Let's call her Amelia. This friend is very religious, and just an all-around wonderful, amazing person. I slept upstairs in the small loft of her cabin on a tiny mattress. One night while Amelia was away babysitting overnight, like she often did for another friend, I was alone in the cabin, trying to rest. It had been over a month since I'd last had one of those dreams. Usually my dreams take a little time to get going, but this time, it was like being thrown into a movie without knowing what's happening. Everything happened fast, no time to figure out what was going on. I remember clearly stumbling out of the cabin, jumping into my jeep, and speeding down the dark back roads where I lived previously. I almost lost control of the car a few times, but I kept going fast while desperately calling Amelia on my phone. I nervously told her I was driving myself to the hospital because I felt really sick and something bad was going to happen. She asked what was wrong, but her voice started to fade away. Instead, I heard this low, scary, growling voice. It whispered weird words that I couldn't understand right into my ear. It didn't even seem like it was coming from the phone. I glance at the rearview mirror on the dashboard, but then, the scary part of the dream happened. Suddenly, the headlights of my Jeep turned off, and I couldn't turn them back on. It was starting to cover my vision. But then, something different happened in my dream for the first time ever. A big hand reached through my hair at the back of my head. It was so big that it felt like the palm could easily cover the back of my head, near my neck. But its finger still touched my forehead. I could even feel claws lightly scratching my skin. Then, the hand grabbed a handful of my hair at the back of my head, pulling my head back forcefully until I was pushed hard against the car seat. The growling got louder and louder, and I felt like something heavy was pressing down on me. And I was so terrified that I felt like I was screaming without making any noise. My mouth was wide open, but nothing was coming out. Whatever it was, I knew it really hated me. Then I remembered something Amelia had told me when I talked to her about these dreams. She taught me the Lord's Prayer and told me to ask God to send the Holy Spirit and St. Michael to protect me. I'd never done this before. I remember begging in my mind for God to help. I promised that if he helped me defeat this thing and make it go away, I would believe in him forever. As soon as I called out to God, the grip on my hair started to loosen. It felt like this thing was letting me go, but it was happening slowly, like it didn't want to. The strange feeling in my stomach and the ringing in my ears started to go away. Finally, I woke up completely. I sat up quickly and looked towards the loft stairs and window, and I saw it. It was the first time I saw it outside my dreams, in real life. There's no light around the cabin, and remember, I'm on the second floor. So I knew that those two red eyes staring at me from the chimney window belonged to that thing. They were big red slashes, and even the whites of the eyes were red. I couldn't see any other details, except for its strange shaped head. But the fact that it was looking at me from the second story window, with no trees or AC units nearby for it to stand on, said everything. Whatever it was, it had to be over eight feet tall to look in through that window. I called Amelia right away. I begged her to stay on the phone with me while I told her about the dream and what happened. It was 3 a.m., but thankfully her friend was home 
so Amelia could start making her way back. She told me to put her on speakerphone as she prayed loudly for me, and she even told me to burn some white sage. Soon, the scary, dark feeling in the cabin disappeared. By the time she got home, everything was back to normal. After that night, I started going to church with Amelia. I would pray with her regularly, and even made up my own personal prayer to say before bed every night. Now, as long as I say the prayer, I don't have those dreams anymore. I haven't seen that thing or felt its presence since then, and I moved into a new apartment by myself. But I still keep in touch with Amelia, and I still pray every night. I know some people might think I'm crazy for this, or say that I can't possibly believe that thing was a demon. But what I have to say to that is, when you're really facing something bad, something that wants you to know it's bad, and wants to hurt you badly, you just know. When I was younger, I spent a lot of time at my friend James's house. He was a good friend of mine, and felt like a brother to me. Since I didn't have any brothers or sisters and didn't get along with my parents, I tried to be at James's house as much as possible. But sometimes his parents would hint that they were getting a bit annoyed, as we always tried to go to the backyard where he had a small man cave. It was a nice space with couch, where normally we played video games, but his parents would get annoyed if I spent too much time with him. His dad would come down, knock on the door, open it and act like James had to go to bed. He would say things like, James, it's late. You need to sleep. Even though we knew he just wanted me to leave. So whenever his dad came down, knocking loudly on the door, I would leave right away. I didn't want to upset them because it was the only place where I felt relaxed or at home. Then I went back to my house and it was terrible. My mom would immediately start yelling at me about the dishwasher, dirty dishes, dirty clothes, and everything else. She never stopped complaining, and it made me feel really stressed. Every little thing would set her off, and she would start complaining. I think she was just letting out her stress, but it was hard for me to deal with. As an 18-year-old guy, still trying to figure out my life, it wasn't fun at all. At this time I wasn't driving, so I walked to James's house. His house was about a 10 minute walk, or 3 or 4 minutes if I ran. I didn't like running in the summer because it made me super sweaty, and then I'd smell bad at his place. If I ran back home before bed, I'd have to take a shower because I hate going to bed sweaty. That night, I stayed at James's place until about midnight. I look at my phone and then at James, and we both grinned, knowing that any second now his dad would come knocking on the door to hint that I should leave. So I decided I didn't want that to happen, so tonight I would leave early to stay on their good side. Maybe it would make his family like me more. I told James I was going to leave, and we fist bumped before I headed out. As I made my way down their driveway, it was pitch black outside since it was midnight. As I was about halfway through my walk, getting closer to my own street, I heard some strange noises ahead. It sounded like someone was groaning or grunting. The sounds were faint and seemed to be coming from a few yards ahead of me. I kept on walking, listening carefully. As I got closer, the noise grew louder and louder. There were bushes dividing each path. I call them paths, but they're really just dirt trails that run alongside people's houses. The bushes made it difficult to see what was ahead or in the next yard. Eventually I got so close that it felt like I could reach out and touch it. I had one more bush to pass, and it sounded like the noise was coming from the other side of it. I slowed down and instinctively stepped into the road to create more space between me and whatever was making those grunting sounds. As I went past the hedge, I saw some gray hair. 
It seemed like the hair of an old lady. I kept walking, and to my surprise, there on the ground was an elderly lady, maybe in her 80s, groaning and grunting on the front lawn. My instincts took over, and right away, I rushed to help her. I carefully moved her into the recovery position. That's all I knew how to do. They taught us that in high school, maybe even in elementary school, if I remember correctly. She wasn't saying anything, not responding at all, just making those grunting sounds. I wasn't sure what else to do, so I just left her like that, hoping it was the right thing to do. It took around five minutes for the medics to arrive, felt like 50 minutes. It was the longest five minutes of my life. I kept thinking that this lady's life was in my hands. I'd never done CPR before, never had to do anything like this. All I knew was to put her in the recovery position, and I hoped that would help. If she had died while I was there, that would have been terrifying. But thankfully, she didn't. The medics showed up and took her away. Even though I don't really talk to anyone in my neighborhood except for James. But whenever I see her doing yard work in her garden, I wave to her. I didn't expect to see her like that when I was walking back from James's house. But since then, I've done that walk a million more times, and nothing unexpected has ever happened again. <laughs>